did not have to go into the tax to get our next guests on <laughs> the program. I mean, we, we had a little more than a mid-level left because it certainly takes more than that <laughs> oh, to get him on. But this guy's worth so much more than he, a mid-level. He, he really Come is. On. I mean, he's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're negotiating with his agents right now, and uh, but we didn't have to pay the tax to get Bobby Marks on. NBA front office insider from ESPN, a frequent guest here on Arizona Sports. And on Today of All Days with Grace and Allen getting his contract extension, we, of course, are very happy to have him on to break it down. Bobby, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? I'm um, good. Well, my son just committed to USC, so I feel like I am a luxury tax-paying uh, parent, if you want to say that right now, right? I think I am in the uh, in the position where Matt uh, Isby is with the, with the roster for, Do you get for the in, foreseeable future. Do you get in-state tuition or out-of-state tuition? Uh, uh, being a Florida resident, no, I, oh, I do not get man. State California tuition. <laughs> Darn, he should have just went to like Florida State or Florida or something. It's uh, great to be uh, a my, Florida Gator. <laughs> my my poor fifteen year old is going to be as uh, he's going to be at Florida. No offense, he's going to be at Florida State or University of uh, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well uh, congratulations on that. But uh, uh, but we'll we'll see if we can get an opt out in your contract, maybe like a player option or yeah. something, so you can resign for a new deal or something. Well, I mean, it was a lot of talk back in January the Suns were going to trade Royce uh, Grace and Allen and I remember yes. you know reporting at the time like look they're not going to trade him matter of fact they're probably going to try to re-sign him and people mm-hmm. didn't really understand how because of the luxury tax but they had the ability with the bird rights and everything to give him this deal um, are you surprised at all that Grace and Allen uh, reached a contract agreement with the Phoenix Suns no, not at all I, I just thought it was a win-win for both teams you know Grace and you guys you guys know has played a his best year that he's been in the league so far. Um, the unknown of free agency here, I think, for Phoenix's um, perspective, it just made all the, the sense in the world because um, you lose him, um, you you know, you basically have the, the minimum exception to, to go out and replace him. And um, you know, ownership has gone all in with this roster. Um, you know that you're going to see it through. Um, and so, no, I didn't. I, it didn't surprise me at all. And we can go over the finances as, as much as we want and everything like that, but. Um, you know, when you made the commitment to get Kevin last February and then did the Bradley Beal trade and did, you know, your, uh, some other things in the off season with, you know, certainly with Nurkic and then go out and, and get Grayson, um, you were committed to this group here. And it, and it gives you a player that if you want it for a win now team, and certainly if you had to pivot, you know, let's say maybe a year from now, if, if that's what you wanted to, uh, that's what you wanted to do. In the simplest of terms, in addition to the, the money and the tax, Explain to our audience why this had to happen with Grayson from a future roster flexibility standpoint, because that's a very important part yeah. of all of this, right? Yeah, I mean, Phoenix was Phoenix was a second apron team with or without Grayson Allen. <laughs> I mean, there was no way dancing around it. They were right at the apron. Um, could they, you know, I saw some people say, well, they could have just traded the Nurkic contract and get under. Well, no, I mean, this is not who ownership is right now. It, it's Maybe that's for another day. If it, uh, Two years from now, you figure you got to break up this group here, but they were already all in with the um, with uh, with the with the second apron, which certainly comes with a, t- a ton of different restrictions here. But it gives you a player, you know, that as I said, you know, you lose him in free agency, you have the veteran minimum exception to replace him, right? That's that's the reality of where you are financially here, and it gives you um, another, if you wanted to, another trade chip six months from now, a, a fifteen sixteen million dollar player that if you wanted to go out and flip and, and take back two players making let's say eight million dollars, you could you could do that and it just gives you more it just gives you more flexibility, certainly financially. It gives you certainly more flexibility as far as on the court. Bobby, the plan is to re-sign Royce O'Neal, either a three or a four year deal for around fourteen million dollars a year. Bring back Josh Akogi. Try to keep Bo Bowl if they can. That might be harder. But if they re-sign Royce O'Neal, you're looking at a tax of over two hundred million dollars. Now, you would know better than me. Has anybody ever yeah. paid that type of tax before in this league? You know, it's funny. When I was in Brooklyn, I think that thirteen fourteen year, um, we paid a hundred million in tax, and that was like a whopper of a number. That was eleven years ago. But no, not even these the, the Golden State teams that basically blew through the um, blew through the payroll. Um, has paid, you know, basically what four hundred million dollars in payroll combined with salary and and, and player right. and then luxury tax. No, it, I, it it isn't. But as I said, like, listen, that's it's not our money. <laughs> right, <laughs> our right. money. It's not our. Hey, look, if, he, if Matt went out there and started raising prices, and your your twenty five dollars seat now becomes two hundred dollars, and then then the fans will probably be, you know, not happy with it. But 
It's not our money. Um, as I said, he's basically gone all in. Um, I think the playoffs are going to be interesting as far as where this Phoenix team goes. I think they're one of five or six teams that can get to a Western Conference Finals. I really do. And I think everyone can get caught up with, hey, they're a six seed, but God almighty, they won 49 games, right, in a Western right. Conference that is as deep as, it, as anything. And if you get game one or two in, in Minnesota, the regular season doesn't matter. You get home court advantage back, and whatever happened, the inconsistent play during the regular season is all forgotten. And I think they showed that they can go on the road and they can beat really good teams. You are really one of the first, if not the first, that was on Royce O'Neal coming to the Suns. I am shocked that there weren't other teams in this league that said, you know what, he's worth a late first-round pick. Let's not only do that to help us, but let's make sure we keep him away from Phoenix. I'm somewhat surprised that that didn't happen. So I want you to comment on that and then also tell me, like, it, is there going to be a lot of teams that are going to go after Royce O'Neal this year? Is it going to be easy to bring him back at $14 million a year, or is there going to be a lot of competition? You know, there's a lot of in-between teams. So the in-between teams are those teams with the non-taxman level at that 12-9, which I'm interested to see because the rules are changing now with that, where now you have the ability to acquire a player in a trade with that exception. So it's going to be interesting if a lot of teams just say, you know what, we're going to bypass free agency. We're going to use this as a trade chip going in, into the season here. And I think teams overlook the value. Certainly what Royce can do on the court. The, the, the ability of, Bert, of acquiring bird rights, which means you can assign that player and exceed the cap, has a tremendous, a tremendous amount of value, certainly for some of these high-spending teams. And I thought the cost to go get them, where it's a, you know, a, bunch of, a bunch of seconds and a bunch of guys on minimum contracts, was, was certainly worth it. Because, as I said, like when you're all in, you continually try to push you know, down on the pedal to see, see what else you can get. Bobby Marks, NBA front office insider, our guest here on the Burns and Gambo Show. My question is one on more from 30,000 feet on this one. Obviously, the second tax apron, the new restrictions were designed to throw up a giant stop sign from teams doing exactly what the Phoenix Suns have done. Are you surprised that it took this little time for somebody to blow right through that stop sign? No, because you basically had – I always I always equated it to kind of going to the buffet line, right? Like when in, in the buffet line's closing at midnight and you get there at 11.45, man. You better eat everything you can um, that's in front of you. I just thought basically what uh, Phoenix has done, certainly starting with the Beal trade last June, they knew they had a year to basically – either you, you had two choices, get your, your finances in order, or you could basically push the limit and do as much as you can before some of these harsher restrictions. Because the reality is – um, Bradley Beal and Grayson Allen would not be on this roster right now if we were um, in July of, of 2024 because of where these restrictions are. So I'm not, I'm not surprised because, as I said, like there was no pulling back, right? Like once, once you kind of knew what, what you were dealt with as far as the restrictions here and this, these new restrictions were, were going to start today, um, you basically had you know, basically two choices. Bobby, we appreciate the time as always. Again, congratulations on the kid going to school. That's awesome. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon, okay? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bobby. Bobby Marks joining us here on the Arizona Sports Line. Grayson Allen, four-year, $70 million contract extension with the Phoenix Suns. The Suns' tax penalty is now $104 million. It would have been It'll be over 41. 200 if they re-sign Royce. And when they re-sign over Royce, $200 million. Over $200 million. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching Burns & Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.